Greetings and salutations gamers, my name is Kyle, also known as Gamers Weekend, and welcome back to the Dark Souls Challenge. Last time, we completed the user-suggested Shields Only Challenge, which turned out to be a lot of fun. Today we answer the question, can you beat Dark Souls with only pyromancy? No, you cannot. Pack it up, folks, we're done here. Alright, pack it up! Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Unlike the other magic styles, there are bosses in this game that are completely immune to fire, and to make matters worse, two of them are required to completely beat the game without causing major glitches or sequence breaks. So just how exactly are we supposed to get around this? Well, let's go over the rules. For this run, the only weapon we are allowed to use is the Pyromancy Flame. No other item can be used as a weapon for this run, which basically means we get our Bare Fist and our Pyromancy Spell Casting Catalyst. That's it. The challenge will begin upon the start of the game and will end upon defeating Gwyn. As always, I will attempt at least every single boss in the game, so we'll see how this goes. And for this run, I will not be entirely banning glitches, but any major glitches that could cause sequence breaks like death camera, wrong warp, or force quit are not allowed. With all of that out of the way, this is the Dark Souls Pyromancy Only Challenge. We name our character Pyra this run, short for Pyromancies, and of course we have to choose the Pyromancer class. The Asylum is nothing special, and we get a hold of our Pyromancy Flame. This is our spell catalyst for the run. We only start with 8 fireballs, but that's more than enough to kill the Asylum Demon, and we head straight to Lordran. And upon hitting Lordran, we've already hit a bit of a wall. Similar to Miracles only, we have to watch the amount of spell casts we have. For now, we only have 8 fireballs, but unlike past runs, all our options to get more pyromancies are locked behind bosses. Aingi. Aingi? Yengi. Aingi. Yengi? Eh, screw it. Egg Guy, as well as Quaylon, are both locked behind Quaylag, and Laurentius is locked behind Capperdemon. And in order to make Quaylana even appear, we need to have a plus 10 flame, so that's not happening anytime soon either. No matter what way you put it, we have to kill some bosses before we get any upgrades whatsoever. Capperdemon and Quaylag are both going to be very tricky this early on, so I decided to get some souls for levels to prepare for them. Best source of those at this point would be Taurus Demon. First we 300 the archers over the tower's edge, and then head for the bull. He's not very difficult, but we are just barely lacking damage to finish him off. Thankfully, fireballs can inflict dodging damage. For those of you who don't know, dodging damage is a type of counterattack that gives an extra 40% to damage taken. Basically, while a creature in Dark Souls is considered dodging, it takes 40% extra damage. Thankfully, Taurus Demon is one of those bosses that has a dodge, so by landing two fireballs while he is dodging, we get enough damage to take him out. However, that's about as far as we can go without any real upgrades. Gargoyles are probably possible with the dodge damage and are definitely possible with Red Steroid Ring, but I want to see how far I can get without relying on Cracked Out Tearstone Ring. Capra Demon is definitely possible with the Red Tearstone, but personally, I'd rather save him for later. By process of elimination, that basically leaves Quaylag, the giant flaming spider who is the first of our required bosses who is, you guessed it, immune to fire. That of course means we have to figure out how to hurt Quaylag. Worst case scenario, we have our bare hands, but I've got a better idea. If we enter Blight Town whilst human, then Maneater Mildred will invade. At which point we have to kill her, but that's gonna be a challenge all on its own. Because somehow, this practically naked woman, with a bag over her head, is more resistant to fire than this giant bull demon. This lady is less hurt by being set on fire than this thing. I am just as confused as you are. So we have to figure out how we are going to take out Mildred without fireballs. Again, worst case scenario, we have our bare hands. However, we do have the advantage of knowing how elevators work, and with some clever movements we can trick her into riding an elevator almost all the way up, and then plummet to her untimely demise. Goodbye Mildred, you won't be missed. Mostly because you're going to be our source of damage against Quaylag. Unfortunately, unlike some other NPCs in this game like Iron Tarkus or Lortrek, Mildred has contracted a bad case of the stupids, which means she spends most of the time either stuck in lava or doing pretty much any other activity that does not include attacking the boss. So now we have to spend our time trying to attract Quaylag's attention whilst waiting for Mildred to finally decide to attack. 
This isn't nearly as entertaining as it sounds, and I think I started to lose my sanity around this point. Yeah, that's a tilter. Three attempts in, and Mildred finally decided she had enough of dying to the lava spider, and finally did the damage we needed. Quaylag goes down, we ring our first bell of awakening, and finally get access to the Chaos Servant's Covenant, which gives us both great Chaos Fireball and the ability to upgrade our flame with... Ainji? Oh, forget it. Now that we've got a bit more burn to our bite, our boss killing capabilities go way up. Unfortunately, that doesn't help us immediately because Ceaseless Discharge is next on my hit list, and guess what? He's also immune to fire! Ceaseless Discharge does happen to be a boss that you technically can skip with a rather difficult speedrunner trick, but all bosses means he has to die. Thankfully, a bare hand gets the job done all the same. We now have enough souls to make the world's worst omelet upgrade us to a plus 9 pyromancy flame. With this and Great Chaos Fireball, we return to the gargoyles and absolutely decimate them with hardly any difficulty. That's the second bell of awakening rung, and we can now access Sen's Happiness House. However, I still want to get some more upgrades and clean up some more bosses. With the gold hem set, the Hellkite Dragon barely even tickles us, and we head into the lower Undead Burg. I want to take out the Capra Demon so I can access the Depths. The large area of effect and the residual lava effect of the Great Chaos Fireball makes this fight a cinch. We kill both dogs and the Capra Demon in just three Great Chaos Fireballs. At this point, I realized I never killed Lortrek and then seriously considered restarting the run due to how annoying it is to not have access to Firelink. I ended up continuing, of course, but just wanted to say out loud how much I really hate Lortrek. After freeing Laurentius in the depths, we head back to Firelink to pick up some new spells and head into the catacombs. Pinwheel is weak to fire, so he lasted about as long as my upload schedule did. Afterwards, we head into the tomb to pick up the Silver Serpent's Ring. I really wanted this ring because while Pyromancies have no level requirements, the soul cost of upgrading them is nowhere near cheap, so we'll keep this on for a while to keep the income of souls supersized. Back to Laurentius to get a plus 10 flame, and now we have access to Quailana in Blighttown. However, I'm fresh out of souls, so I head back to the sewers to hunt a dragon. The fight is pretty easy, I'll be a bit obnoxious due to the fact that I forgot to kill the channeler, but he goes down all the same. We head back to Blighttown to get our hands on great combustion from our new pyromancy teacher, and now we are really rocking some firepower. Combustion on its own is a great melee style magic, but great combustion is a whole new league in damage. With all these upgrades pouring in, I think it's time to head back to Shady Oaks to take out good old Thunder Thighs. His resistance to fire is greater than you'd expect, but nevertheless, we have more than enough damage to slowly burn him away. Another boss down, more souls in our pocket, and a peculiar doll to our name. Another trip down to Quailana gets us great fireball and some more uses of combustion. Pop quiz! What's a good looking, flying, magical being that is currently covered in third degree burns? The Moonlight Butterfly while it's on fire. Back into the forest for Danger Doggo. He's surprisingly hard to hit with Pyromancies at times due to him constantly moving and some weird hitbox shenanigans, but eventually we take him out. We're already doing pretty good on damage, but we are nowhere even close to being fully upgraded. We upgrade our flame to a plus 14 and then head back to the Undead Burg to kill the Undead Merchant. With the Resident's key in hand, we can free Griggs from the Lower Burg. Back at Firelink, he'll sell us the Belling Dragoncrest Ring, which for some reason works on Pyromancy. One trip through the Joy House later, and it's Iron Golem time. However, this boss is beyond easy with the right positioning. A couple great combustions later, and he tumbles to his demise. Through the Painting Guardians, past the Archers for a Soul of a Hero, into the Keep, and Recep at the Bonfire. We head into the main room of the Londo Keep and activate the Black Eye Orb to take on Lortrek. He goes down... LIKE A PUNK! And we claim the Fap Ring as well as the Firelink Keeper Soul. Time for the Super Londo Brothers Ultimate! The hardest part of this fight is by far Phase 1, and thankfully Ornstein is pretty weak to fire. As long as Smoth doesn't take us down while we're distracted, then we should be in a good spot. We take him out fairly quickly and slowly help Smoth burn some fat. That was a good one, me. Thanks, me. You're welcome, me. Guinevere goes down to turn Anor Londo into real gamer hours, and we take out the Londo Firekeeper. 
Next thing to do is to head into the Dark Moon Tomb to take out the Lady Boy. He's not that hard to chase down, and with our damage, his health bar absolutely melts. That's another boss off our list. We head back to Firelink to restore Anastasia, who upgrades our flask to a plus two, and then head to Quelana. With a bunch of our souls, she ascends our flame and takes us up to a plus four flame, which means we're only one upgrade away from being a fully leveled pyromancer. I'm gonna need some more souls though before I can max it out, so it's time to head into the Painted World. We don't run into any real issues getting to the boss, and then we have a nice chat with the pretty dragon cat lady before I decide to burn her alive. She thinks she's clever by turning invisible, but I have a firestorm which knocks her out of her shroud and makes this fight an easy W. It's at this point that I was very abruptly reminded that I apparently forgot to place the Lord Vessel. So we're going to go do that now and then decide to take on the only Lord that doesn't require the Lord Vessel. Make sense? Didn't think so. Needless to say, we picked up Fire Whip and if given the time to do its full damage, it hurts. Needless to say, we have more than enough damage to finish off the Four Kings for our first Lord Soul. Time to head back into the Tomb of the B-Boys to take out the Rave Lord. Nito isn't particularly a fan of being set on fire, and we take him out with a Fire Whip and a Fire Orb. So you would think that the Fire Sage Demon, who's in the fire area and is currently on fire, would be immune to fire damage. But somewhere our logic must clearly be flawed, because the Fire Sage is weak to fire. It makes so much sense that my recording got corrupted somehow and I lost the footage of me fighting him. Unfortunately, I also lost footage of me grabbing the Dust Crown and killing the Hydra, so that's a bummer. Thankfully, I caught the mistake before we headed into the Centipede Demon, who happens to be the next boss who is immune to fire damage. We could summon Solaire here, but I've got a better plan. By luring the Centipede Demon into the corner just left of the door and baiting him into a grab attack, you cause him to be banished into another dimension and die. Okay, what's really happening here is when the Centipede Demon grabs in this specific location, it causes his hitbox to extend to a portion of the arena he's not supposed to be in, which causes him to launch up and out of the arena and into the void where he falls until he hits the kill box and dies instantly. No fire damage required. Before we head into the Bed of Chaos, we quickly make a detour to grab Chaos Fire Whip, which improves our already bonkers damage significantly. Finally, time for the Bed of Chaos, and for once, things seem to be going as planned. We managed to destroy both orbs without any real problems, and make it to the center where... You saw nothing. Into the Duke's archives, haha ha, get pranked, hentai powers activate, and into the Crystal Caves. Many speedrunners like to spend time figuring out a good strategy to have no clams for their Seath fight. But remember that if setting something on fire doesn't work, then surely setting it more on fire will work. As for Seath, I'll let this fight explain itself. Yeah, weak to fire doesn't work out too well for him in this run. Back into the Duke's archives to grab the broken pendant and its DLC time. First boss up is the Sanctuary Guardian, and while we do a lot of damage to him, he doesn't give us a lot of opportunities to attack. This fight goes pretty long for this challenge, but we take him out first try nonetheless. Once we're through the gardens, it's Artorias' turn. Last time on the shield challenge, we figured out that a tank strategy works out pretty well, and this is no different. We get through the fight fairly easily. As we make our way through the township, I make sure to grab the silver pendant and the crest key. All we have left are the two titans of the DLC, Calamite and Manus. I figured Calamite, a dragon, is going to be fairly resistant to fire, so it's Abyssal Daddy time. Unlike past runs, we have fairly good damage against the father, with more than enough damage to take him out. 
Although it gets extremely close at times, we manage to survive and finish him off in just our first try. I'd like to say Calamite went just as easy as Manus, but unfortunately it's not so simple. Not because he's extremely resistant to fire, I'm just bad at fighting this boss. Like, embarrassingly bad at fighting this boss. Thankfully, it doesn't take us too long, and only on our third attempt we put the Black Dragon out of commission. We are one Gwyn fight away from the end, and you'd expect me to use the Elizabeth Mushroom and Stone Armor method, but no need. While I do use an Elizabeth Mushroom for safety, there's actually a hilarious interaction between Gwyn and the Combustion type spells. For some reason, Gwyn will sometimes try to dodge the Combustion spell after you've already used it, which can catch him in an entertaining AI loop. Not only that, but Combustion is a great substitute for reposting. Put all these things together and you get yourself an easy victory against Gwyn. And with that, we have officially beaten every boss with... mostly Pyromancy. Well... this is embarrassing. I remember saying at the beginning of this series that I'd be doing the challenges from least difficult to most difficult, but to be honest, this felt much easier than the Miracles Only challenge. I guess I really underestimated the power of late game Pyromancy. It does make sense though, most bosses in this game are fairly susceptible to fire damage, and just like sorcery, Pyromancy has a lot of available spells, meaning you don't have to worry about limited spell use. So while I underestimated Miracles only, I guess I way overestimated Pyromancy only. Either way, we have officially completed the Magic Only Trilogy. If I had to rank them, I would definitely say Sorcery was the least difficult, Miracles was the most difficult, and Pyromancy would sit comfortably in between them. I'm not entirely sure what challenge I'm going to do next, but I'm always keeping an eye out for suggestions. Let me know in the comments if you have a challenge you want to see me make a video on. It could be wacky, difficult, or just plain weird. I'm interested in seeing what you guys can come up with. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, bop that subscribe button, and ring a tingling that little bell to be notified whenever I drop another video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you gamers on the flip side. Later!